hundreds of neo-Nazis were gathering in Washington, D.C. to hear a speech from their newest leader, Davis Wolfgang Hawk. But Davis actually had a little secret. Now, thousands of protesters were gonna counter the event. Late night hosts made fun. Magazines wrote scathing commentaries about racism still being alive in 1999. Because Davis had the fastest growing white pride website, the Knights of Freedom, with 8,000 members. And his whole plan was to be president of the United States. But no one really knew who Davis Wolfgang Hawk was. No one had ever seen a picture of him. So Davis revealed his face to the world to show off that Aryan heritage, but would end up revealing that little secret. He was 25% Jewish. He was a Jewish college kid running America's fastest white pride movement, selling swastika merch by the thousand, all out of his dorm room, and now was planning the biggest white pride rally ever seen in the United States. People flipped. The New York Times ran articles unmasking the leader of the Knights of Freedom. But for Davis, all of this negative press couldn't have come at a worse time. His big white pride rally he'd been planning for months. Yeah, that was like a week away. But in the game of chess, you, you can't let one bad move throw you off. Davis being a state champion at chess, decided to still go forward with this rally on August 7th, 1999, even though people knew he was Jewish. Now, DC spent over a million dollars preparing for this event. They hired 2,000 cops, 10,000 counter protesters were there, and news stations from all across the country were just there to witness the chaos unfold. According to the permits, there would be 300 neo-Nazis at 3 p.m. But after all the talk and the permits and the coverage about this for months, as the clock struck three, Davis Wolfgang Hawk, he never even showed up. Only three neo these came. Now, counter protesters were ecstatic. It seemed that online white pride, it, it wasn't a real thing. But for Davis, with his uh, Jewish heritage being revealed, chickened out last minute with his girlfriend, Patricia, and he sent this email to all of his members as a little sign. You have let down the white race. And as a man of honor, I resign my position as leader. The Knights of Freedom was taken offline forever, and we never saw racism ever again. But Davis was still determined to be the first white supremacist president. But in the course of trying to get there, he would change the internet forever. Laws would be passed, bills would be enacted, groups would form by the thousand because of what Davis did next. I honestly hope that someone when he goes to class today kills him. He is no longer the son I knew. That was Davis's mom that told the reporter that. Now, upon discovering a swastika embezzled dorm room, Davis was kicked out of college, and his parents, with his dad working at MIT, cut Davis off completely. Now, his parents would actually tell reporters they had no idea about these racist ideas and that it was all just a big power fantasy their son had. But now, cut off from daddy's credit card, Davis moved into a scrapyard trailer with his girlfriend, Patricia, but with no job or savings to make ends meet, he began selling all of that see merch from his dorm room walls on this uh, hot little website, eBay. But as the months dragged on, this whole eBay Nazi venture turned out a lot harder than he thought. Between the postage and the packaging and customer service, he was making as much as he would have made working at McDonald's. But Davis would never work there. I mean, that was beneath his race. You see, he needed to make fast cash. So we checked his email. Spam scams, mammograms, and wiener pills with our stealth mail bomber. Our cloaking code keeps you spamming and the ISPs <laughs> scramming. Order now to explode your business and get one million emails for free. Results may vary, not available in all locations. Shipping and handling not included. So we got an idea. He was going to overdraft his debit card, buy the stealth mail bomber, pirate the software, and then sell it back to that one million email list for not $99, but now 20 bucks. It was a genius plan that only a new Nazi could come up with. But the next morning, Davis woke up to a little call. It's come to our attention that your account's been used to send bulk unsolicited email. Happens again, you're terminated. Yeah, that whole stealth mail bomber cloaking code to prevent the spam detection. Yeah, this didn't work. Davis had gotten scammed fair and square, but it couldn't have happened at a worse time. Barely able to eat, down to his last box of Top Ramen. He was just trying to survive because now his eBay account was terminated. So in a desperate plea, he thought, what if instead of being scammed, he became the scammer? Do you want to learn the secrets of the rich and the wealthy? Learn today with the Millionaire CD all of their secrets. Learn how they evade their taxes. Learn how they exploit child labor. Learn all of this and more for $99. Oh, Davis thought this was genius. I mean, not for the info on the CD, but to do the same thing he did before. Pirate the CD, sell it back at a lower price. So he bought the CD, ripped off that email word for word, only changing where to send the check to. So after starving for months, his mailbox was flooded with checks from around the country. Davis had not just made his first sales spamming, but we're talking a couple hundred. Quicksilver Industries, as he called it, was now open for business, and the kid was only getting started. Oh, his next product would be a spammer's delight. 
Do you want to learn how to stalk your ex-girlfriend, Samantha? Do you want to learn how to disappear without a trace because the cartels won't let you leave on peaceful terms? Or do you want to learn how to build a silencer? Well, learn all of this and more with the band CD for $19.99. Davis began rolling in the dough with the band CD. We're talking thousands of dollars through millions of emails. But unlike before, people started complaining. Reed Walker got 40 emails in one week for the band CD. So he hit that unsubscribe link. But then the amount of spam he got doubled. You see, back in the day, hitting the unsubscribe link actually just verified your email to the spammer that that email was actually a prime target to get even more spam. So all out of options, he emails Quicksilver Industries a hundred times in one hour. You can be jailed for spamming, which I'm doing everything to get your ass tracked down. Quit sending me this. And while Davis normally wouldn't respond, he did. I'm actually never going to remove you from this list. In fact, I'm going to distribute your email address to as many spamming companies that I know. And no, asshole, I can't be jailed for spamming. But those in Washington were trying to. Shortly after I was elected to Congress, I got a, an email at home that said what the federal government doesn't want you to know. And I opened it up and found myself in a website. That's not what I wanted to see. Because in now 2002, 23% of all emails were spam. And Davis was one of the biggest culprits. When an ISP shut down one of his internet accounts for spamming, he'd open up 12 burner ones. It was just a game of cat and mouse, but he knew this couldn't last forever. So why not go all in? Attracting human females is hard, but with Quicksilver Labs Alpha Mate Pheromones, it's easy. Targeting a human woman's ancient mating behaviors held within her brain, Alpha Mate turns that hard no into a soft yes. Trigger the biological breeding urge of human females within a three meter radius for $19.99. Order now. Pheromones. According to the supplier, these things were a babe magnet. Women have this special receptor in their nose, and when it hits them, it just drives them wild. Junk science. But for Davis, I mean, it was the perfect product for his perfect customer, lonely men. With the emails such as induce her breeding desire, Davis sold case after case. And while advertising like this is pretty heavily regulated, well, on the internet, no one seemed to care. Yet. Now, a year later, Davis was now close to being a millionaire. He bought a ranch for him and Patricia to have their half dog, half wolves run free. He had a network of employees all around the country to avoid the uh, spam detection. It was a lifestyle he just couldn't have dreamed of a couple years ago. But Davis questioned it all. Now, while Davis was making buku bucks, he began to worry about the future. How long would this whole thing last? What if the feds or even the tax man came after his money? Or just like maybe in the books he sold, what if he wanted to just disappear one day? So like a libertarian freak, he began burying his cash in little secret plots across the country. He began questioning what he even ate and became a vegan. In 2002, he gave up alcohol, he slept outside and became obsessed with the idea of living forever. But even for Patricia, his lover and business partner, now wanted to have kids and settle down, to which uh, Davis broke up with her and peaced out, leaving her with next to nothing. You see, the money had turned him in from a kid trying to fund his white supremacist campaign to now of an eccentric libertarian millionaire. The worst. But his racist beliefs were now completely gone, but only when he came into power of those around him. It seemed that his parents were right. Davis just had a big power fantasy. Now, to a spammer, an AOL email was like pure gold, and you may wonder why. Well, AOL customers were f***ing loaded. Welcome. And on the black market for 52 grand, Davis bought the entire AOL customer database from an employee who had stolen it. And while this would be the opportunity of a lifetime and Davis would make millions and millions of dollars, buying this stolen email list would begin Davis's downfall. But beyond that, I mean, with an email list this good, Davis needed the perfect product. I mean, pheromones are freak libertarian books. They ain't gonna cut it. Quicksilver Labs has unlocked a secret to make you 25% bigger, be more confident, radiate success, have other men look at you with envy in the locker room. Grow your wand today with Pinnacle Pills for $49.99. And you know, while today it seems a little bit ridiculous, I mean, in 2002, everyone believed what they read on the internet. Over 100,000 AOL customers bought Pinnacle Pills. According to leak logs, customers were executives at banks, school teachers, soldiers. I mean, who doesn't want to make their rod two inches bigger? I could think of one person, but what else would that customer also want? So Davis gave his friend a video camera and a little plan. He told him to fly down to Columbia, film some of the ladies of the night down there doing the deed, bring the tapes back, edit them up, and he would start his newest company, Cream Pie Productions. Davis had big plans to spam these new adult videos all over the interwebs. 
But once his friend came back and he checked out the tapes, yeah, there was no money to be made from this. The quality sucked, there was no story, but Davis didn't give up. He told his friend to fly back down there, but then to find a Colombian hooker willing to get a green card in America so it could be Davis's own live-in hooker. And he found some 19-year-old chick for 2,000 a week who took up the deal and he was single, making millions of dollars, private hooker. What could go wrong? Now the ISPs were beginning to crack down even harder on spammers. And Davis, he knew right now his days were numbered. He was getting hit with anti-spam lawsuits from companies by the dozens. But he thought, what if he wasn't on the front lines? Instead of mining the gold, why not sell the shovels to the miners? So under the alias of Dave Bridger, he began recruiting the biggest spammers in the game, like Robbie Tadino, also known as the time travel spammer. A man who had sent over 100 million emails hawking his time travel equipment was now gonna sell pinnacle pills on behalf of Davis Wolfgang Hawk. And now Davis saw success like he had never had, pulling in half a million dollars a month in profit. All while Davis didn't have to deal with the headaches of spam filters and complaints and all of that. But now Pinnacle Pills was getting into the inbox of every man, woman, and child in the US. And people took notice. By 2003, 42% of all emails were spam. And Uncle Sam was beginning to notice because the EU outlaw spam entirely. So would the US do the same? Hell no, George Bush would federally legalize it. It's, there's a lot of pages. There's a lot of numbers. With the Can Spam Act of 2003. And he created guidelines on how to send legal spam. Basically the unsubscribe link, it's gotta work. Spammers be pre Spammers be put on notice. With this bill, Congress is saying that if you're a spammer, you could wind up in the slammer. Hell, even Bill Gates said, spam will now be a thing of the past and we never saw spam ever again. But just how serious was the government about the Canning Spam Act? On March 6, 2004, Davis is hit with violations of the Can Spam Act and AOL was coming after him for $12.8 million. Or in other words, they wanted $1 for every spam mail Davis sent just in the month of January. While Davis's business partners were freaking the f out and his employees running around with their heads cut off, Davis actually <laughs> laughed at this entire thing because he said, quote, I have no assets. What are they gonna go after me for? And Davis was right. He was worth technically nothing on paper. You see, over the years, he had taken all of the money he had made and bought gold bars with every last cent and hid it in these little stashes all across the country. So he told his business partners adios, he shaved his head and went off of the grid, leaving the entire mess to his business partners. Now the partners would actually cooperate with AOL, giving up their brand new Hummer, 20000 in gold, you know, $3 million, no big deal. But here's how big spam was in the zeitgeist of the 2000s. AOL took the Hummer and the gold and did a sweepstakes called Win a Spammer's Hummer and Gold. No joke. And then actually found the article of the guy actually winning the thing. Like how often do you find that? So rather than fight the case, Davis had done what he'd always done in his life, run away. He had failed to show up in court and AOL won $12.8 million. But as far as AOL actually getting that money, there's kind of a little problem with that. Davis now hadn't been seen in over a year. But now with Davis totally gone, his ex-girlfriend Patricia actually revealed that little secret to AOL. She told them that he had these gold bars buried at all of his relatives' homes and then even showed receipts for buying that gold. The judge gave permission to AOL to use sonar and dig up the parents' backyards to find the gold. But a year later, the gold nor Davis Wolfgang Hawk were actually ever seen again. In 2017, a deceased man was found shot with this car set on fire in Squamish, Canada. Now, locals knew the man as uh, Jesse James, but the police couldn't even identify the body or even the victim's real name. Now, according to his Instagram, Jesse James was a, a rock climber, a vegan, a leftist activist, but in none of his pictures did he ever show his face. Now, Jesse told locals that he had served in the IDF and had a girlfriend for the past three years and that he had a doctorate from Stanford in physics. Now his girlfriend would tell police that Jesse had told her that he had hundreds of millions of cryptocurrency and that the reason he had to live this anonymous life under this clear alias of Jesse James was because of that. But through the months chasing all of these leads, the police had no idea who Jesse James really was or even who ended his life. Someone wanted him dead and they left no trace behind. 
I'll be providing an update on a homicide case that happened in 2017 out of Squamish, BC. This is a case that's been shrouded in mystery since our victim went by the name of Jesse James, and he was well known in that community as an avid climber. Uh, now, the victim's actual name remained unknown until recently when it was confirmed as Davis Wolfgang Hawk. Mr. Hawk was 38 years old at the time of his death. Conclusively establishing our victim as Mr. Hawk, although it answers some questions, is that it's actually opened up more questions on the case. So Davis had managed to sneak into Canada and live completely undetected for a decade. He lived off of the grid. I mean, he like paid a friend to register his car in their name. He ran off whenever the police were called. No one had any idea. But now with this real identity being revealed, the stories that Jesse James told became even crazier. A neo-Nazi who now told people he served in the IDF. A man who wrote about genocide to now publicly decrying companies for not having enough diversity in their marketing. But only one thing made sense. Davis Wolfgang Hawk had millions in gold bars, and this Jesse James had told his girlfriend that he had hundreds of millions in Bitcoin. This is somebody who lived with extensive anonymity, and the reason for that explained to me just the fact of his large wealth in cryptocurrency putting him at potential risk. And this is the main theory for his murder. Now, the sixth largest Bitcoin wallet in the world today has about a couple billion dollars, but that wallet has been untouched since 2012. So the theory goes, Davis Wolfgang Hawk, when he first escaped the country, had about 200 pounds in gold bars. Now, that's a lot of weight to carry around. That's a huge pain in the ass. I ain't carrying that. So Davis being a pretty tech savvy guy, it would make sense that in about 2012, he would have taken some of those gold bars and converted it into Bitcoin. But today, we still don't know why he was up in Canada when he even snuck in or what he was even doing for the past 10 years. And today, six years later, his case is still unsolved. While Jesse James apparently had all of the money in the world, he just couldn't run away from his problems.